India might have stamped its authority in the global political landscape. It is influencing geopolitical decision-making. It has launched very successful space missions to Mars and the Moon. But everything becomes nullified if it can't safeguard its women population. Over the last few years, there has been an increase in sexual violence against women in India. As India reached the heights of economic development, the nature of sexual violence has become more and more brutal, more and more aggressive, vigilante and gangsterism, more in the form of aggression or revenge or hate towards the women folk, not just for sexual fantasies. Because in this particular case in Kolkata, the trainee doctor was brutally tortured, her genitals were bleeding, many parts of her body were wounded and she was strangulated to death. Despite all these evidences, the hospital authorities decided to close the case, calling it a suicide. The Kolkata police also labeled it as suicide initially, but after and the Matthew outrage in the streets and elsewhere in the country, it was revoked it was as rape and murder. And now the Central Bureau of Investigation has stepped in. Chief Minister of West Bengal, Mamata Banerjee, has called the outrage or demonstrations around the country as politically motivated. And she and her political party which is the most powerful party in West Bengal, is now on a defensive mode. And the ruling central party, central government of India, the ruling party of India, the BJP, the World Switches Party, which during its campaign uses the slogan Beti Bachao that means save your daughters, is now spelling blood because this is a great opportunity for them to bring down Mamata Banerjee's government in West Bengal whom they consider as their greatest rival. Every time when the country is witnessing such major assaults and crimes against women like this one, the narrative which picks up in the early part somehow deflects to rather more frivolous subjects like manhood, muscularism and political rivalism. Like the feminist organizations of the country have been now labeling as all men are responsible and men cannot be trusted. The political parties, especially the ruling uh, the BJP and its guardian organization, the RSS, is actually taking this opportunity to smear the government of West Bengal because now it's a great opportunity and this might be their best chance to bring down the 15-year-old state government ruling state party of West Bengal. But unfortunately, the problem in India is not just certain states or certain cultures. The sexual violence against women is spread across the country and particularly in north western or northeastern part of India. And particularly backward states, economically and uh, educationally backward states like Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, Haryana, including the capital city of Delhi, ranks in the top notch in, in crimes relating to sexual violence. In 2022 alone, the report from the National Crime Report Bureau itself says that there were more than 4,44,000 4, 4, cases in the entire country of which Uttar Pradesh ranked the top with 65,000 cases of reported sexual violence. Now, these are only reported cases. In the Hindi belt of India, which is very backward in terms of emancipation, in, in terms of egalitarianism, in terms of any liberal attitude towards women, the problem is the social structure, the society itself, because there is a culture of victim, victim blaming and shaming. So suppose a woman is being, if this or if this is nothing but sexual harassment, is a victim of sexual offense or sexual abuse. She will be reluctant to go home and tell her parents or she will be reluctant to go and talk to the authorities because she will be seen as a sleazy woman. Because the attitude towards women are extremely diabolic. They are backward. They are obscurantist. 
women do not have a platform or do not have a agency to actually report any kind of crime against them yes justice has to be served here right away but if the tv media largely fueled by the indian government and the urban middle class and the civic society which is quite bravely fighting this case is just engaging in winning political brownie points and smearing a political party then we will lose the fight in potentially bringing changes legally and socially in the prevention of atrocities against women